as you know, we originally wanted to have Libertopia up in San Francisco, kind of uh, the land of love, peace, and uh, all the craziness there, but it didn't work out with the hotel, so we collapsed it into this one large event, as you know, with Hollywood Expo, made it economically feasible for me to do it uh, at a high-end, on a high-end caliber basis, which is what we wanted to do. I wanted to bring in sort of the all-stars uh, of our movement to light the fuse, if you will. So uh, I hope that we, in some small measure, did that here uh, this weekend. And I don't know, Stefan here? Stefan, are you still in the house? I heard him do a lunch today, and uh, kind of really touched me personally that he said that, he said, I think 10, 15, 20 years from now, we're going to be talking about that first Libertopia that we all did that started the movement really going. So I hope uh, everyone in this room feels the same way. If we were to do one next year, I really want to. But I really need everybody that was here this year to support us next year. And it's not going to be in this venue. It won't be Hollywood. Uh, I haven't decided yet. And that's partially what I wanted to do was to talk about a show of hands first off. Who would consider coming back again next year? Oh, I'm going away. Okay, that's, that's wonderful. Uh, this town's expensive to mount and produce a show. Again, part of it is maybe you know or don't know. I'm, a, I'm an attorney, but I'm also I'm a film producer. I have keen ideas on how we can start to reach more of the mass, the masses with entertainment, especially as Neil Shulman, I think, so uh, <coughs> articulated so well. That's part of what I think we need to do. Uh, so we can live in peace and freedom and prosper. Uh, is there, if I were to hold it next year with you members, say somewhere on the west coast again, how many could do that? Okay, so pretty much everybody again. How about on the east coast? So about half. How about something like Santa, either Orange, how about Orange County? Okay, good, good. How about, uh, Santa Clara. So almost about the same for Santa Clara, Orange County. Those are some of my thoughts on that. Second was, rather than holding it in a really high-end hotel, maybe make it, transform it more into a truly a festival. Uh, a lot outside if we can. Again, that's why probably the West Coast is a better idea for that, where we could have tents, more vendors, more musicians, uh, a lot more choices in you know, we don't have to do $75 lunches. I mean, I wanted to do $10, $10 lunches, but you can't do it in these hotels, and, and you need to book up so many rooms. So I'm going to be looking at alternate. Can uh, we sleep indoors? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, 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 we take maybe the best of Burning Man, but have a hotel. <laughs> so I, I'm going to be, I'll be searching over the, over the next month uh, and I want everybody's feedback on it. If you know facilities that have that great ho a hotel, where at least it's, it's nice accommodations, but you can be outdoors as well, that's what I'm looking for. Yes? Uh, Northern California Renaissance Fair venue. Where's that held at? Is it a fairgrounds? It's uh, off Highway 128, I think it is. Uh -huh. uh, north of Hollister, and the road between Monterey and Okay. Can you email me information on that at, at libertopia.org? That would be great. Brilliant. That's why I, I, would everybody like that? Would they prefer that? Yeah. Something like an, oh, an outdoor where there's hotels around so you can access it. We can have it in the fairgrounds, but then close to a hotel. Camp out. And camp out too if you wanted to. So if you wanted to go cheap. The, guy, the, the guys from uh, Free State, and I appreciate them supporting our show and coming here. Uh, they have uh, what's now, I think, has become very successful, which is Pork Fest. I think they had a really, <laughs> a really grand showing there. I think they've been doubling their numbers. And uh, Stefan, I mentioned you a little bit earlier. What was it that you said at lunch about Libertopia? Beatles and Hamburg. Uh, you know, could, you sh could you share your thoughts on that? Great to be among like-minded people, which means minded people. <laughs> uh, and I would say the biggest gathering of voluntarists probably for a hundred years. <laughs> now, it's true that we're still smaller than bit players in Happy Days, but we're in the building. <laughs> and that counts for something. So thank you everybody for coming. Mm -hmm. And thank you everybody for organizing it. And we give these guys a hand. Thank you.
about her. So I just want to acknowledge her, just her steadfastness, her determination, and, and, and obviously uh, I had to attend the other side of the show, and she was like, what? Uh, I just told her the first day is going to be rough, but after that, you know, so I apologize for whatever little uh, disorganizational issues we had. It was sort of a spontaneous chaos, but it, uh, hopefully it flowed up into some form of organization. And, uh, and it sounds like everybody had a great time. So that's where we're leading to. We'll do something like that. I'm not sure yet what time of year it's going to be. Now, or maybe we'll shoot for something up Central California, maybe Northern California, or Orange County. We'll keep it on the West Coast. And uh, maybe we'll, we won't have as many speakers. And we'll more time for each. each. What, more, time <laughs> more time for each. More time for each. Right, exactly. Here, here. Yeah, I got, I got out of control. Well, the thing was, someone said to me, how did you get like all these dicks? Well, we had our lunch to do our Vulcan mind up. And I realized we'd already done it in some other lifetime. Didn't need to. Uh, and I said, Dick, this is what I like to do. And it was already done. You already knew. He was brilliant. I want to thank, first off, Dick Body for having me. Vendors that came and supported the show too. I hope you guys. Shows and obviously we're doing it for uh, the greater good of humanity and and I appreciate everyone here that came to support. It. So uh, I think we'll do is we'll, we'll ratchet down the number of speakers because everyone I asked said yes. That was the, <laughs> the incredible thing. I think even Peter Thiel said to me at, at, at the banquet dinner last night. And for those of you that went there, uh, I mean, I, I tripped out myself personally. It was just a, a grand experience. And, and those that weren't able to make it, uh, I'll do something just equally or even more spectacular next year so that you can join us and hopefully we can make it a little bit more economical too. But it was really a grand time. The, the original singer, the Platters, broke open and, yeah. and did some songs for us, Virgil. And he's brilliant. He came to me afterwards. He said, "I didn't know, but you know, I'm a, I'm one of you wild libertarians. I had no idea. He goes, I will support you in any way possible, in any events." So he, he was great. And we found him through the show. We don't care. So it's just one of those serendipitous moments. So I think we'll have less speakers. Uh, and I'm looking for ideas from all of you as to what you would like to see. If it's more of a an event and uh, more of a festival celebration. In terms of selection of speakers, it's we're, it's very much centered in on anarcho capitalists. I'd like to see at least move out as far as say as maybe some mutualists and, okay. and and have some some broader discussion of anarchism that that that's, that gets includes some slightly more left oriented. Yeah, I agree. Uh, that's that's, that's great. I like to see all in, I'm absolutely. Especially I'm all in Northern America. California. <laughs> As long as it, I mean, I, a little bit of a struggle. I try to keep Libertopia as pure as you possibly can with the one principle truly of no force. Right? Mutual right? So, you know. But it could be a debate. Uh, to be honest, if you went off, if you went off the reservation, and that's, hey, everyone's an individual, so that's okay. And, and we should be able to bring it in, but that really the purpose was was to bring the world's largest gallery, gathering in the last century. And I think we did accomplish that. I think the fuse has been lit. I think we just need to continue it. And certainly the tent should should grow, but always with the first you know prime directive, right? Non-interference and love and peace and things that we all should respect. I'm sorry, to you, the I'm sorry if this was already asked, but uh, I didn't get a chance to see all the speakers that I wanted to. Is the media going to be available in some form or fashion? I kept it uh, on the low. You know, uh, I had a PR firm obviously working for me on the, on the other show. Uh, I just, uh, I had a lot of people ask me if I was going to be doing that. We had Reason, of course, was one of our big sponsors and we couldn't have done this event without them. Um, I think when we get to a large enough mass, let's say we had 250 people here this weekend, next year if I'm going to shoot for a lofty goal of 500 and doubling every year, up into a certain point. I mean, Freedom Fest, if, you, if anyone, I mean, most of you have probably been there, they started off with about 200, 250 people their first year, went to 500, and then they, they uh, went to 1,000, and then Mark just took it off, and he's flown with it since then. So I think we'll probably have that same kind of trajectory, unless each one of you could convince four people to come next time. <laughs> we'd be in good shape. 
You know, we go from 250 to 1,000, and then that, or more, and we could rival Burning Man in, it in less than hey. half a decade. Hey. Right? <laughs> and then, then you've got, and guess what? When you bring, uh, as we know, you bring 20, 25, 50,000 people together for three, four, five days, like they did at Woodstock, but this time it's intellectually driven, <laughs> rather than just driven by pot and all the other good stuff. Uh, you've got a free society right there. Right there, you've got the foundation for, uh, all we've got to do is find out where we're going to go from there. So, uh, and I know the free, the free state guys have that same kind of concept, and I think it's, it's a valid one if you can bring enough people, like-minded together. You, we can form that, Libertopia. Which leads you to the opportunity of a simulation of a free society right. on site. Right, exactly. You know, at least for those four days. We know we do it on the internet to some degree as well, but yeah, we're living in free. Any other thoughts or feedback? Well, yes? Um, well, it's, it's definitely not the same crowd of people at all, but I, I think some, some of the things they do are interesting. There's, there's these gatherings called rainbow gatherings. They, they call themselves anarchists, but uh, they, they're not allowed to use money, and they're very communitarian, and uh, there's, there's no like, intellectual thinkers for them. But, but one, uh, one idea that I think they do that is very interesting, and if we get enough people, I, I would be very interested in doing this. They, they camp in national park areas, like public land, without right. any permits at all, and there's so many of them that there's nothing that the, the state can do about it. So I think that if we set up, if we set up like big enough like camping areas, like be like, and, and turn it into a, uh, we're doing this under the authority, there's going to be so many of us without permits that they're not going to be able to do anything. Real democracy, real the people. No, Mark Stevens made us all felony drug possessors the first time. So. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely, yeah, we need to fuse uh, some of these groups Some together. way to do that, exactly. Someone on the side raising their hand before? Yes. Uh, if you were thinking totally in California, if you went to New York, Southern New York, California, right. thinking about the Nevada, though. Yeah? Reno, I think. Tahoe? Yeah. We just have to find the right venue, and the key is finding an affordable, the right venue that can at least accommodate hotels as well as people that might want to camp and, and we can do it outdoors. Okay. I mean, that's what they do with me. Yeah. Sure. A couple ideas I'd like to throw out. Um, I, I love the outdoor thing and I want to try to help you make this happen. Uh, you know, I've been active with the Libertarian Party. Could you get them just hold your hand like that? Could we get a little sign? I've been involved with the Libertarian Party for a while and I've been trying to push them to uh, you know, really revitalize the uh, LP's national conventions and festivals and make them low cost, more affordable, uh, get more non-libertarians in. And that's, I think, a key thing. I, I, would, I would like to see, if possible, the speakers be free to the public and make money from other events, uh, meals, uh, you know, entertainment of various kinds, the non-speaker stuff. Um, you know, perhaps have one big general concert area where you alternate, you know, speakers and, and music. So, you know, maybe the non-libertarians will come there for the music, but then the band will finish playing and the, the, somebody will start speaking. It'll be interesting, so I'll stick around to, you know, till they get to the next music set. That way, you know, we, we pollinate a larger audience. Another uh, big advantage of getting uh, these things out of the hotels, you know, besides, uh, well, the vendors is a really important one. If you don't have to charge the vendors, a lot more of them will show up. And when space isn't at a premium, you know, you can have basically unlimited vendors. If you're doing it out in a field somewhere or something, it's just like, yeah, you have something to show, we'll give you space for a table. You know, maybe we'll even give you a table or a little tent or something, just, just show up. And some of those uh, vendors will end up, you know, paying for meals or whatnot. So, you know, it won't really be costing you anything extra and you can actually make money. And when you get a large enough number of vendors, you start getting a lot of people who want to come just for the shopping experience. I mean, in San Francisco, where I live, you know, they're doing various kind of specialty shows all the time at places like Fort Mason or, you know, the uh, uh, Expo Center south of Market, you know, where it'll be a car and boat show or outdoors show or fashion or whatever, and people pay 10 or $15 cover just to go. And there might be a few speakers, but it's mostly just about the vendors and being able to shop. Another thing is we can have, uh, you know, charge food or beverage vendors to come in instead of paying the hotel's inflated prices for food and drinks. You know, we could either sell, you know, food and drinks ourselves as an organization or, or charge food and drink vendors to come in and, and sell to our uh, attendees. 
at more reasonable cost and actually, you know, the event make a profit yeah. from it. Um, and, uh, you know, we can also get more artists to come if there's larger numbers of people coming, including the general public. You know, we can get artists to come and display their artwork, you know, and have the chance to sell it. Uh, you know, so it becomes, you know, then more like Burning Man, as you were saying, where there's like a lot of interesting art and stuff present, you know, maybe not with Burning Man's strictly non-commercial emphasis, although I, I, I think there's something of value in the experiment that Burning Man has kind of been doing with a gift economy, and there's a, a terrific film, uh, by the way, called Gifting It, if any of you ever get a chance to check it out about uh, Burning Man and this kind of idea of a, a non-commercial based economy, but, um, you know, in terms of, of making an event viable like this, I think that, um, you know, just bringing in the art and, and uh, you know, having workshops to teach people how to create art, how people in our movement, because, you know, our movement is under, and I think there was a speaker here this weekend on it that I didn't see, but, you know, we, we're underrepresented in the arts and film and, and fiction writing and these kind of things that, that spread cultural memes. And there's kind of two ways we can fix this. You know, either we can get these people to become libertarians or we can acquire the skills to become artists ourselves, and, and probably it's going to be a combination of the two things, but, you know, we get more artists to be present at these things by giving them an opportunity to bring their art and have an audience and potential customers. You know, that's one way to, to help achieve that. And the distinguish, the way we can di be distinguished from Burning Man is precisely because we are business friendly. We are not a gift economy. We understand that if you are rich, uh, you can afford a gift economy, but if you are just a normal person seeking to make a living, it's totally legitimate to, uh, to, buy, and sell, uh, to buy and sell things. And uh, instead of burning the man at the end, we may sell, sell him or keep him as a, you know? We're not into des des destroying things and, and putting things back a as they were. We're into uh, taking something and making it better at the end. The, the field should not be like a clean as it was and uh, a desert at the end. It should be richer and, oh, see, we have like la last year's temple. It's still there and you can still use it. It's not we destroy everything at the end. See, some of y'all could have been a panelist up here, and you just sat back there. Uh, uh, anybody else up there? Yes. This whole thing that might be um, as use, if you can put up a web page, a sign-up page, um, just by word of mouth, everyone that's here and anyone that you ever meet, get the word out there that next year is going to happen. Hey, you're a great artist. Why don't you go and sign up? You know, get your work out there. Start, start to listen. You get a Facebook page, at least. Yeah. Is there a month out of the year, and this is going to be a hard one to, to present, but is there a month out of the year that's the most preparable for, for our group in the room today? Not too hot. Not too hot? Uh, uh, not too hot? Is October fine yeah. for everybody? I know for some of the academics, it, it's a juggle to, to get out of their classroom or instruction, but for the most part, it's October. Yeah. Out of here, I suppose it's the best oh, one. Sure. But in part with libertarian, there's a big fall in the spring. So a lot of libertarians are events in the spring, right. more than in the fall, I think. So you get one less competition. That was my, you know, my research showed something exactly that happened. Yeah. Yeah. Best, best fall. Freedom song is going to fall. I was looking and see if I see it's December every right year. Right. If they stay around December, they stay around the fall. I think it worked. Yeah. Because I decided that I'm probably going to go back to freedom song uh -huh. because it is a it's non-school issue. Yeah, I guess one of the things to do, of course, would be just to, to, to find out what all the libertarian events are and look for the one that might that, that would be a hole in there where there's not a whole lot of stuff happening. It's, it's always a little rough when you schedule something, there's three or four other really popular events happening right. on the same weekend. Right. How many people in this room go to Freedom Fest pretty much every year? I could do it some, some years. Like I, mean, I, I, I personally find it way too conservative. Yeah. Well, I'll be going this year, so I might be yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, And I had thought about it being around, actually, one of my, my first thought was July, July 4th weekend. And uh, but I changed that because it's a tough time for a lot of people. And it was just a, 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 the signature event of July the 4th, declaring our individual independence. So I like that. But at the same time, it's still a, it's a, it's a difficult time for a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of families to get out. Yeah. 
They let people get their own fireworks that can be dropped. Yes. I was going to say that. I, I also like that July 4th idea. The, the idea of doing it around a national holiday is appealing at the same time that a lot of people are usually predisposed to other things, either family or other obligations. Right. It's problematic. So it's good that sometime in the fall, there's not very many, there's not as many national holidays going on. Well, if everybody's doing the month of October. Yeah. Those yeah. Month and if, it, if that's a, a good month, for, uh, everyone's here already, so it's your birthday. It's your birthday. <laughs> well, good. I think we'll stick with that. I think that seems to be. Right. Yeah. On the West Coast, yeah. we'll keep, we'll keep it to the West Coast, either Orange County or Central Tahoe. Yeah. Well, I think it's Tahoe. 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 Taho